I'm gonna get into this. Hey y'all, good morning. Welcome back to another video. I am here at Mount Vernon Barbell, just finished a shoulder and chest workout. I am focusing this video really on my recovery. So some of you may know, some of you may not know. Earlier this year, I got a breast augmentation. And so I'm really rebuilding right now and working my way back up to gaining some strength and also some muscle back into my upper body. Um, I am taking advantage, so I feel like I'm getting some newbie gains right now. So I'm gonna take you along the ride with my little shoulder workout, my little chest workout. Um, I did hit um, some 35s today, so that's the heaviest I've gone in dumbbells. I have not benched since my surgery. Uh, honestly, it's mostly fear. I probably could get under the bar, um, but I'm taking things slow, enjoying the ride. So I hope you enjoy. At the end, I'll talk a little bit about my recovery, um, what caused me or what motivated me to actually go through after a long time of debating, and some of the maybe questions um, that people don't know. So when I was researching I didn't find a lot of information about how to get back into training after so I want to share what my process has been like and anyone who is considering or maybe has and hasn't gotten back into the gym um, share some tips that help me um, to get back and, and feel really good since I have been back so I hope you enjoy I'll see you in a bit peace <laughs> and those clips so it's been some time I had a pretty busy week but I wanted to get on here again and kind of give some insight to my recovery um, and I'm gonna do it in a question format nobody necessarily asks me these questions but these are questions that I wanted answered when I was going into my surgery um, and I really didn't get all the answers and so I kind of had to learn as I went and kind of trust uh, some of the experts I guess you can say to so my doctor and yeah it, it was really a learning curve and it still is because it hasn't been that long in my opinion so the first question is what made me decide on getting a breast augmentation so ultimately um, I, it was something that I had always wanted I wouldn't say always I have been training for such a long time and I have had a lot of fluctuations in not crazy fluctuations but I have had fluctuations that have impacted my body composition and that also includes breast tissue and so with the gaining and losing gaining and losing weight I did lose a lot of tissue and I kind of felt I never really was like you know big up top I've always had a smaller top frame but um, it was, it was a significant amount that I felt a little bit uncomfortable with. I really wasn't confident with how I looked in certain outfits, certain dresses, shirts. And so the ultimate goal was to look how I look in a bra with that one. My hesitancy was that there was going to be downtime. I was also fearful because there, you know, there can be complications with any surgery 
any sort of um, body change that you you do go about so I, that was something that I was very fearful about and so I said you know I know how I look now like I don't know how I look after so I, I was kind of like skeptical and mainly it really was the downtime both um, from work and any regular physical activity or you know life stuff but also the downtime from the gym I did not know what to expect going in so I did do some research um, prior to my surgery and I also discussed it with my doctor of course but I did some research about people who had gone in and got breast augmentations some who were um, active and some who were not so just regular day-to-day -day lifestyle um, people who shared their experience and ultimately I I still felt like well it seems like it's pretty individual and what I will say to that is it definitely is individual so I watched a few people or I've seen a few people who have had breast augmentations and they were in the gym within a few weeks or you know a couple weeks and felt pretty good you know doing upper body movement and you know maybe benching and stuff again people who were um, doing that prior really had no problem or not a lot of problems going back into it and some people that had um, a longer a longer time um, or recovery based on what they did so what the process was like the process for getting my breast augmentation it took some time for me uh, in 2019 I went and got some consultations done and ultimately settled um, well felt most comfortable with the consultation I had with Dr. Yeager so Dr. Yeager, I'll put his at, he's pretty active on Instagram. I still did not move forward. So that was early 2019 that I got my initial consultation and we kind of went through like what some of the options were, um, whether I was going to do submuscular, which I ultimately ended up doing. And, uh, you know, I had questions about activity and all of the things that he made me feel most comfortable and I, I felt that I kind of guided the process so it wasn't like a doctor telling me well this is what you're gonna do it was kind of like well what do you want what are your expectations and then his expert opinion and what I ultimately ended up doing so that's what made me decide to move forward um, with Dr. Yeager so that was in 2019 I still was hesitant like I said and I still was like well I don't have enough time I'm pretty busy I don't want to be you know I don't know what the process is going to be like and so I decided to wait and I think it was more fear than time so yeah I was super super fearful of the surgery and I didn't have a lot of confidence like I was like ah, I don't think I'm gonna do it I feel fine with the way I look I feel fine with the way I look I did feel like I want the surgery with quarantine and all the shutdowns I was um, I had a little bit more free time and so I contacted Dr. Yeager again at the end of 2019 we set up another virtual consultation just to revisit some of the topics and, and discussion that we had and we scheduled a date so January 22nd I went in for uh, my surgery I do wish that I would have recorded uh, the days after I took some photos but those are very personal to me and so I won't share those but I will say that it was up and down so the first day I got out I was out of it I had a pretty early surgery but then in the evening I was kind of like up and moving around and because I am not a person that likes to like lay down or nap or anything like that I was I was kind of going through it so I would pace my living room um, walking upstairs was super super hard I was really nauseous and um, you know I had been given painkillers but on the day of I took some of the harder they gave me the harder pain medicine when I woke up from surgery but I'm I'm like not into stuff like that I don't like any hard um, like narcotics or anything like that is that what that is narcotics I don't like any hard painkillers. I like to be aware. So I ended up just doing Tylenol. So I would do 500 to 1,000 Tylenol every four to six hours, depending on, like if I felt like the pain was gonna come on, um, I would take that. 
sleeping was <laughs> I had to sleep on my back upright for I would say like two weeks and I still like now I just sleep like this like then in terms of training so my doctor advised that um, I went through the process as my doctor advised I did not like jump any hoops or try to skip anything like I wanted my recovery to be top notch and so I made sure like I asked and then even when I was clear to do certain things I still was like all right am I feeling good today do I feel all right and so I got um the first the first week I was told to just relax like don't do anything um recover like literally let your body do its thing let it just whatever I did walk around a little bit in the living room I remember one day I walked outside and walking outside it was cold out girl that was that was different for two weeks I was clear to do some cardio and so I have a stationary bike at home so I did a little bit of that pretty low intensity um, going on walks was something that I would do of course and so it was really very, very light stuff, um, just getting the heart rate up, getting back into movement, and I felt pretty good there. Um, a week and a half later, I got cleared, so after three weeks, I got cleared to do lower body and literally body weight, like nothing intense, body weight squats, body weight lunges, and that was um, something that I did at home. I didn't really go back into the gym until week four. Uh, and I was cleared on week four to do machine exercises, but I could not use my hands um, to like grip or, or anything. Um, so I'm back into the gym. I did like leg extensions, seated leg curls. I remember doing belt squats. So like I would hiccup, I, I guess I could loop in um, one of the clips that I have, an old clip from that recovery, but I would put, um, the dip belt on to the cable machine and I did squats that way so that helped my sanity so much the Smith machine I used to do hip thrust on it and so I was getting back into movements that was after like three to weeks th from weeks th from weeks three to six that was pretty much my workout and I was doing I was focusing a lot on lower body um, and I also did a lot of hip workouts at home and so I was doing like jump squats um, anything like sort of cardio-esque I guess you can say um, and that helped me kind of feel like I was getting the work in and kind of feel good again because during recovery like I want to caution like you look so different during your recovery from surgery I guess any sort of surgery but breast augmentation it really is like a mind game uh, I was like, I look like an alien. Um, <laughs> yo, I felt like an alien. I was like, what the hell did I do? And then after like week six, you started, finally start to look a little bit normal. Like your breasts start to fall a bit. And so before that, it was just kind of like, um, I know this is not how I'm supposed to look. But again, my doctor was kind of like, yeah, you're going to look like that. Just kind of hang tight. Things will be good. Um, they'll fall into place literally and so they did <laughs> Thank God. week six I started to incorporate some dumbbell movements um, some Smith machine squats but I was very very cautious with like the weight and the load um, the volume was a little bit higher but the, the load was definitely a lot lower until I got comfortable again and I started incorporating a little bit of arms there as well so I would alternate I would do like one lower body day, um, an arm day, cardio, and then rinse and repeat. After eight weeks, I got cleared to do back, and so I started doing um, some dumbbell movements and like row movements. The one movement that really felt uncomfortable for me for a long time was lat pull downs, whether it was narrow grip or wide grip. Nah, it felt like I was gonna explode. So. I, I stood away from those and I just did what felt comfortable and so there were some days throughout that process that I felt very very good and then there were some days that I realized like I need to take a step back just go get a pump 
don't worry about like moving the weight up and so that was a mind game for me as well because I am somebody who likes to progressively overload in my training as everyone should but I wasn't able to do that every week I was kind of like it was like ebb that flowed uh, it was not linear in my recovery at all after three months my doctor cleared me to do chest and shoulders and so I slowly started incorporating chest I focused mostly on shoulders because it felt a lot more comfortable um, I didn't feel like it was directly um, pressed um, my chest was would feel tight sometimes and so when I tried to incorporate dumbbells at first um, nah, I wasn't with it um, I before my surgery I was able to do push-ups like I could bust out like 25 push-ups no problem um, for a few sets and holding a plank was pretty difficult so I just stood away from those things until it felt comfortable so where am I now it's been today is oh my god it's gonna be seven months right February April, May, June, July, August, September. Oh my god, eight months. Eight months. So eight months since surgery tomorrow, which is crazy. It feels like it flew. And like to see the progress from getting back into the gym week two and week three till now is crazy for me because I'm I feel like I'm if not better body composition wise than I was prior to surgery, I'm definitely better. I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm done. My, my body composition has improved so, so much. Uh, and I attribute that to the fact that before surgery, I had never taken this much time or that much time off from the gym. Even two weeks was like, I have never done that in all the years of training. And so to take that time off from training in general, any gym movements, to not having any upper body movements for that six to eight weeks and then three months, my body was able to reset and recover and I got some newbie gains in. So that's why I was saying like, it feels like I've gained a little bit of mass again and my body recomped um, pretty well after the surgery. So something that I had been so, so fearful about ultimately ended up in me being a lot more comfortable in how I look surgery or not whatever the case may be when you focus on strength your aesthetic just comes along for the ride and it's been that way um, throughout this process so um, I feel very comfortable in how I look there are days so I had a question the other day about how the movements felt after surgery and so I have not benched since surgery is something that I know it's probably a mind thing for me um, but I have not benched because I feel so fearful. I never really had a lot of upper body bench strength prior to surgery. So I feel like that's something that I am cautioning. And so I focus on dumbbell and a lot of machine movements right now. So when I, when I shot that, um, those clips in the gym, I hit 35 dumbbells for I think a set of six. I have to double check. But that was the most weight I've moved on dumbbells. Um, for chest in a long time and this week I'm feeling it like I feel super sore like today I did um, some chest again and chest and shoulders and it I wasn't able to move 35 like I had to go down to 25 city but knowing that I have to just let that happen um, it's a part of the process it's a part of recovery but I was able to do that and I definitely wasn't able to do that six months ago so it's still a work in progress the recovery is ongoing um, and I'm excited that I was actually able I'm able to share this for anyone who may have questions I don't think this was as in-depth as my intention was and I really do wish I had the context to share so like the after surgery video of me waking up and being completely out of it um, to you know some of the the talks with my doctor um, I wish I was able to share that but I do say to do your research if you have um, questions about surgery I am not an expert but my process was I guess you can say what any normal person 
um, who is an active person would have gone through. I think because I never, I never had, I didn't have a lot of upper body size prior. Um, I, my recovery was a little tougher um, because when you do have more upper body size, you're able to kind of, I guess, recover a little bit better. I don't know if that's true or not, but I feel like some days I feel a little more tense than others in my chest. I think this is one of the decisions that I'm very, very happy with. Um, and yeah, I feel a lot more confident. So one thing I will say for ladies is, uh, especially being in the gym, the aesthetic piece of the gym is hard to overcome. And one of the biggest things for me was that I wasn't able to grow boobs in the gym, let's be honest. So I I was motivated to do it and I felt like, well, I can't grow, I can't grow boobs in the gym. Do what makes you happy. Uh, if you feel comfortable getting a breast augmentation or you've thought about it and you're skeptical, consult with the doctor, consult with your family and your friends if you're comfortable doing that as well. The decision is yours to make. Uh, do what makes you happy, do what makes you feel good. This makes me feel good and sharing it with you definitely makes me feel great. Uh, I was hesitant because judgment, right? Like you had a breast augmentation and you know your first thing is like you have to hide it from people but I think the more people that share information about the reality of it is the better. Um, this was my experience this you know everybody's experience is unique but when I was going into surgery like I had very few resources to help with the process and I, I want to be another resource for y'all and I I don't think again this was as in depth as I would have liked so if you do have any questions for me feel free to drop them in the chat box or DM them to me on Instagram I'm more than happy to answer them or create another video with a little bit more of a background maybe a part two to this um, thank you so much for watching today thank you for the support please like comment share and subscribe and I'll see you next time peace y'all